Hi everyone. So welcome to the class of business to business marketing. So let us today discuss about a new uh, uh, you know unit and uh, which is highly important in terms of the business market, right? This has uh, importance uh, in both consumer market as well as business market, but the relevance becomes little more slightly higher due to the characteristics of the business market. Now, as we know that business market is basically, you know, it depends on direct marketing or, you know, personal selling, personal relationships. So, the most important thing that in a business market is all about how do you manage relationships, right? What kind of relationship exists between the buyer and the seller and its customers? So, that becomes a very important issue. So, that is today the, you know, the point of discussion for today and we are going to talk about it. Now, if you look at this slide, talks about the top benefits of B2B marketing agencies. B2B relationships are basically loyal. That means the trust factor or loyalty factor is very important and it plays a vital role in business market, in the profitability of a business firm and its sales and its you know return on investment, everything. Now, if you say personalization is key to winning business as it is mentioned out here, right? So, the most important thing when you talk about business market is about what kind of relationship is existing between the people who are coming to for sales and the buyer and all, right? So, a very strong relationship is expected to you know, uh, exist between the buyer and the seller. This is true because 84 percent of customers say that being treated, they should be treated like a person and not a number, right? So, if you want to convert a, you know, a potential lead into a sales in the business market, you have to treat your customer as a person. That means you should be knowing about them, their habits, their you know, details, their needs, everything, right? And instead of the, that, we should not be treating them like some number, right? Some fancy number. So, relationship is a very important issue. And today, as we are discussing, we can understand. So, let us talk about an example. This is a company called Veolia, right? Now, Veolia is into hazardous waste treatment and uh, disposal, right? They have a customer or, you know, they have a company who is uh, working for them whose name is Reflective Data. Now, Reflective Data is a company which is, which helps businesses to become more data driven through their SaaS products, data engineering services and consultation, okay? Now, what does Reflective Data do for Veolia? what, how does it help Veolia, right? So, here we are talking about, let us say this is a buyer, uh, he is a buyer and this is a supplier. Now, so this supplier is supplying its services to Veolia. Now, what is Veolia getting out of this relationship? Now, if you see here, reflective data now takes the, you know, different, you know, data from Facebook, social media data, from, you know, different analytics, right, from different e-commerce sites and all, all this data it takes, right? and tries to convert and tries to find out something, some reports and some, you know, spreadsheets and all, which is then they pass it on the information to Veolia. So, reflective data helps in understanding the data from collecting the data and understanding the data and then passing on this data to the company who then can further utilize this data for their, uh, you know, decision making processes. So, Veolia, you know, the uh, the senior marketing manager, uh, Parker says, reflective data has been one of our key partners in digital analytics for over two years now. They help kickstart our efforts in tracking data analysis, data visualization and reporting. Reflective data truly acted as an extension to our team and the level of collaboration was much more than a partnership, you know, uh, more to a partnership than a client or vendor relationship. So, here you can see that this relationship is no more a uh, you know a relationship like a simple buyer and seller relationship that but more than that it is becoming more collaborative in nature that means reflective data is trying to understand the needs of veolia and accordingly they try to capture data and try to create different kind of spreadsheet tools and other uh, tools and then pass it on this information to Veolia who can understand about their clients in a much better way and that helps them in the decision making process. 
So, how do they boost relationships? The question is, how does CRM, you know, how do companies, you know, uh, what do companies do and how do they boost relationships? So, when you talk about, you know, uh, it is a CRM, right? We are talking about customer relationship management. So, CRM tools, they help in boosting relationships in the form like they help in tracking customers, they help in personalized customization and they help also in identifying the loyal customers, right? So, these are very important from any business point of view if you see. Now, tracking your customers. So, what exactly are your customers doing? What changes are happening in them, right? And what are the potential or, you know, future changes they would be requiring? So, if as a company, as a supplier, I can understand my customers, if I am constantly tracking them and I am trying to understand what they are doing and what changes they might require in the future, so, that will help me serve my customers better. Similarly, personalized customization or personal customization that means to give very customized solutions to the customer, right? Whatever exactly he requires or that company requires, my, my buyer requires from me. As a sub supplier, I would try to make it more uh, customized, uh, customized in nature. Now, this can only happen when you have a detailed idea, a detailed idea about the requirements a detailed idea about the requirements and unless we understand the requirements, so we cannot help them. So, as a supplier, I need to give this personal attention, personal customization and this also helps to identify the loyal customers. See, if you remember, there is a Pareto's principle which says 80-20 principle. Now, it says 80 percent of the revenue come from 20 percent of the loyal customers or important customers. And this principle is an universally applicable principle, right? So, why is it important to identify loyal customers? Because it is important because the company can give higher emphasis or much, you know, uh, time and, uh, you know, let us say, uh, most allocate most of his resources in order to give a better, you know, service to this loyal customers. So, if you have done a hierarchy, let us say, right, 1, 2, 3 in a rank for example, you can understand ki, okay, fine, if I have 10, uh, let us say clients, so maybe the first 3 are the most important and they give me almost 50 percent of my total revenue. So, obviously, my emphasis, my service has to be much higher for these 3 than uh, the last 3 maybe, okay. What are the benefits of improving your relationship with clients? Now, the question is, what happens when we you know, improve our relationship? Why are we even talking about relationships so much, right? In the B2B market, as I have said, B2B market, B2B industry, relationship plays a very, very vital role because the number of customers are always less, right? Customers are few, right? But they buy in bulk, right? Or they purchase in bulk. So, the benefits of improving our relationship with clients is first, it gives very high valued feedbacks. Now, feedbacks in one way, you know, what feedbacks we get, the company gets. Now, this feedback helps in future, you know, uh, development, R&D and, you know, other things so that the company can develop a new product and give it to the market, right? So, high valued feedbacks, customer loyalty, now, if the customer is a loyal customer, obviously, we can expect a decent value of order in a regular time, right? So, as a result, what happens when a customer, when a supplier, let us say, gets a decent order from a company and he is sure about this order, that helps him in many ways. For, for example, one of the things that helps is in a better forecasting, right? So, as a better forecasting, all advantages that are connected with a better forecasting he can get because Better forecasting will help in, you know, raw material, you know, purchase process, in fact, any purchase process of the company, right, and uh, managing the uh, machines better, managing the machines better. So, all these points would be Im uh, important if you have a customer, loyal customer with you, who you know, you are sure of giving you repeat business, okay. Increased leads and sales. So, the number of leads and sales would improve. That means potential customers, uh, that number would tend to grow and that also will get converted into finally sales. 
well established trust and the customer churn the you know customer churn means leaving customers leaving you and leaving the supplier and going to somebody else that thing would reduce drastically which will help the company as in marketing we know that you know getting a new customer is very difficult it almost five times more costlier than retaining a new customer or an existing customer this is even more you know applicable in a b2b market b2b market as i said because the customers are few and they are bulk so you don't get a customer very easily right so that is it becomes more important that you do not allow the customer to go away for whatever reasons it could be what reflective data does for veolia so in that case it helps them in one way if we say in nutshell it is managing customers so they help Veolia in managing their customers well, understanding the customers and then managing the, their customers well. Okay. Now, when we are saying managing customers, what do we mean by saying managing customers? So, managing customers can be defined as the process of differentiating transactional and collaborative customers. Now, you might be thinking, what are transactional and collaborative customers? I okay, will explain them. So, just understand now this is something like if this is a segment and this is you know transactional right. So, the the last the, the end part is the collaborative right this is what you need to understand. So, delivering offerings that value fulfill the respective requirements and preferences of a portfolio of customers in a superior way and getting a fair return in exchange. So, what it says is basically it is a process of differentiating transactional and collaborative customers. So, transactional, so what is transactional and what is collaborative? Let us see. And is there anything in between? Let us see that. Okay. So, as I said, relationships can be, you know, transactional relationships, collaborative relationships, but there is something else which we can also add up, right, which is called value added relationships. Now, what are these transactional value added and collaborative relationships? Okay, let us understand them. So, let us go to the first one transactional relationships. Now, if you look at this photo, right, this picture, you can see here that this, you know, they, this company is trying to announce for some kind of sales of products and their this whole intention is to sell the product, right. Okay, so what it says? Transactional relationship is a strategy that aims to increase efficiency and volume of point of sale transactions. This approach focuses on making the sale rather than forming a relationship. So, the whole idea about a transactional relationship is to convert the lead into sales as much as possible and they are not interested in such a situation there is no interest in forming a relationship. So, a repeat is something not much of interest rather pushing the product or selling the product is a vital thing. Once the business completes a transaction, there is no further interaction with the customer other than the potential customer service assistance or something. So, once you have made a sales, you may be giving some customer service assistance that is by default some kind of a you know by default you have to give that, but the company does not take the pain of building a relationship and interacting with the customer for getting a repeat client or something like that. Okay. So, as we can understand transactional relationships are more like one time sale, one time sale and the, the company is interested, the seller is interested in just selling the product and maximizing its profit. Now, let us look at an example, a person comes into a store and buys a hammer. Okay. The buyer wants a hammer and the seller sells him one. That is all there is to it. That means, once the hammer has been sold, now the shopkeeper or the seller is not interested in what the customer is going to do, whether he is comfortable, is it a good thing or not. He is not interested. Right? The seller knows one thing that the customer has demanded for a particular product item and we have supplied it to that. The business market includes items where bidding is employed like packaging, cleaning products or commodity type products or service activity, right. So, items like packaging items, you know, cleaning products, commodity type products or service activities, here you see this kind of a relationship. Now, transactional exchanges or relationships 
employ something called an arm's length relationship. Now, why? What is arm's length? Arm's length, as you can see from the name, something that is very close, you know, to you. Arm's length, so um, close to something uh, to my hand or arm, right? So here, the relationship between the buyer and the seller is mostly based on price, right? So. So, the seller wants to maximize its price in the process of the transaction and then it is not bothered about repeat or you know future sales, right. So, this one time sales they want to maximize their benefit. Such exchanges are purely contractual agreements, arrangements that involve little or no emotional commitment to sustaining the relationship in the future, okay. So, transactional is something where you the sellers uh, suppliers sold the product the buyer purchased the product and the relationship ends out there. The benefits of such transactional relationships could be low cost and quick sales. Now, why low cost? Because even the buyer who is buying the product from the seller, he also knows that since the seller is not going to provide me any other service, right, assistance, any other assistance services and thing. So, the seller selling point or USP is always low cost. So, the seller would try to attract the buyer on basis of the cost, right. So, so, any buyer who wants such a product which is as good as a, like a commodity or something, he would like to buy at a very low cost and then he can get from such kind of a transactional relationship, right. You can find in let us say industrial chemicals uh, for certain you know a kind of uh, very basic products in the industrial market and it helps in getting a quick sales for the seller. What are value added relationships? Now, in between the second one after transactional we developed into a value added. So, we can say that something you know one a seller who is let us say selling to Reliance or let us say Siemens or GE or anybody can convert or move from a transactional relationship to a value added relationship and then further enhance itself to a collaborative relationship. So, value added exchanges fall between transactional and collaborative exchanges, right. Now, what happens here? Now, the firm, the seller is not only interested in selling, but he wants to give some additional services. So, he provides some additional services, developing services that are customized to the buyer's needs and provide some incentives that will repeat the business. So, now, this is little enhanced, this is little more sophisticated than the transactional relationship and the seller is trying to add certain value, right, as the name value, the word value is coming out here. So, some value addition is being done. So, the seller feels that it is at least getting some extra incentives, okay. Now, Granger provides a customized web page for each of its premier custom corporate customers, for each of its corporate customers that individual employees in the customer organization can use to track expenditures on maintenance and operating supplies. So, these are some kind of incentives or extra benefits, extra features that the company can provide, ok. The third one is collaborative relationship. Now, it is a process where the customer firm and the supplier firm form a strong and extensive social economic service and technological tie over time, right. The intent of partnering is to lower the total, lower the total cost and or increase value, right. But collaborative relationships go beyond uh, cost, right. So, what it does is not only help in reducing the cost, but helps in understanding, uh, helps in you know making the buyer, let us say more agile, ready to market, right, ready to market and uh, comes up with new products, helps in new product development process. So, there are some very essential, uh, essential you know benefits that the company gets right from uh, a collaborative relationship. Now, if you see here, it helps one is uh, you know it gives you a very long term sales. Now, long term sales means when you have a collaborative relationship or a partnership with some firm. Now, what happens is the buying firm right gives a repeat, becomes a repeat customer, right. He tends to buy more and more from the same supplier, right, because he believes that this supplier is going to help me in the future in my forecasting, understanding the consumer, 
and maybe you know uh, designing new products for the market and making me agile making me keeping me ready for the market all the time so different kind of benefits the uh, you know the supplier is uh, providing it helps in giving you very precious customer feedback now what feedback the market has what the market feels the customer feels about the buyer the supplier also helps the seller also helps in acquiring such kind of feedback and passing it on to the uh, buyer the third is it's an it gives you an high roi the return on investment so roi is return on investment okay so obviously when organizations work for a very long time and they create a collaborative relationship in a long period of time it helps them to understand the the understanding between the buyer and the seller becomes so you know a clear crystal clear that it reduces defects right it reduces defects it reduces uh, you know uh, your uh, reduces your supply chain costs right supply chain costs supply chain costs right and it gives you several other benefits which results in ultimately in creating a higher roi for the buyer right so i think we have understood that first of all relationship in the b2b market is a very important factor right and uh, no b2b businesses can run without a proper you know uh, strong relationship between the buyer and the seller and why this buyer and seller relationship is so important today if you see almost all almost all or most of the you know fortune 500 companies even large companies right they have reduced their customer the supplier base from a very large number to a few right for example companies like xerox and all who used to have thousands of uh, suppliers at one point of time maybe something around 10000 20000 suppliers globally today are having less than 1000 suppliers with them right so why this is becoming important because now the customer tends to understand the buyer better right the 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 supplier and the buyer their understanding becomes uh, very clear this was a example with toyota where toyota also had done this when one of its suppliers had gone through a massive fire at a, a fire you know in accident toyota helped the supplier to develop to you know uh, redevelop the infrastructure and do everything and after certain years they again started purchasing from the same uh, supplier the same vendor right so this example you can also find it in tata doing it in jamshedpur in their uh, in the tata steel tata motors uh, you know uh, uh, business and all so this kind of relationship uh, has become very important in today's uh, time and co- companies are taking advantage of it trying to develop relationship so that it eventually leads them to higher profitability and better you know brand in the market a better brand image in the market right so with this i like to wind up today's lecture and uh, we'll meet in the next lecture then till then take care thank you very much